This is a difficult story for me to write. My life has been completely destroyed since it all happened, and honestly, I don't really want to tell it, but my therapist said it would be good for me. My name is Oletta Walsh, and this all happened about a year ago. I was 24 at the time, and it was four days before Valentine's Day. I was at the grocery store here in town, I won't say which one, and I was about to check out when a guy named Mark started talking to me while we stood in line. He wore a coat with the logo of the same concrete business my mother worked at. He definitely wasn't ugly and seemed to be pretty well off, but I wasn't really looking for love. I was still living with my mother, and my career as a web designer hadn't quite taken off yet. Still, the small talk was nice, at first. You know, Valentine's Day is coming up. It would be a shame for a beautiful woman like you to be alone on it. I blushed at this. Well, thank you. You definitely know how to make a girl feel special, but I'm afraid I'm not available. Oh, you have a boyfriend? He asked, raising his eyebrows. No, no, I just don't feel ready for a relationship. Well, it doesn't have to be all that bad, does it? A night together, just me and you, maybe sharing that lip balm? He said, nodding to the tube I placed on the belt. Now it seemed whenever his eyes weren't meeting mine, they were rolling up and down my body. I felt naked at that moment, and I just wanted to leave. Uh, no, that's okay. Thank you, though, I replied, and turned the other way to face the cashier. I was hoping that would be the end of it, but as I told the cashier my phone number for my reward points, the man behind me persisted. You really are quite beautiful. I think we would be great together. I tried to ignore him as the cashier rang up my groceries. You have an amazing smile. I really can't get enough of it, you know? You should definitely smile more. The cashier seemed to sense my discomfort and asked, So, Oletta, we're still on for dinner later, right? I smiled at this, looking at the weirdo behind me, and replied, I wouldn't miss it, Mason, seeing the name tag on his vest. This seemed to work, as the guy behind me broke all contact. I could still feel his eyes burning their way through my clothes, but I thanked Mason and was able to go on my way. Later that night, I was sitting on the couch next to my mom, watching TV. It was almost 9pm, and my phone began to vibrate. Before I could even check the text, another came through, then another. Opening them up, they were from an unknown number. Hey Oletta, it was really great to meet you. What are you doing right now? We should go on a date, you would really get to like me. I recoiled at seeing these, so much so that my mom snapped her head over and asked, What's wrong? I proceeded to tell her the events at the grocery store and showed her the texts. You think that's Mark? Let me take a look, she said, pulling out her own phone and list of contacts. No, that's not him. His area code isn't 207. Pretty sure that creep was the only one who was hitting on me today. Well, I'll have a talk with him tomorrow, alright? He's probably just overexcited. Don't start losing your mind over it, she said, and we resumed watching TV. The next morning, I woke up to a dozen texts from the same number. I called my phone provider and had my number changed. That seemed to do the trick. The rest of the morning was pretty uneventful. I had a couple small jobs updating some websites and trying to get them traffic. I finished around 1pm and went back to the grocery store to get food for Caution, my mother's dog. I was feeling kind of nervous that I might run into Mark again, but I felt a little better as I walked by the employee picnic table. Mason was on his break and gave me a smile and a wave. I waved back and made my way inside. My fears were soon realized when I saw none other than Mark as I walked past the paper plates. I expected there to be some kind of big episode, but he just gave me a weak smile, nodded, then went back to picking which tinfoil he wanted. I smiled out of instinct, but quickly backtracked around the other side of the aisle. This was insane. Yesterday was the first time I had ever met him, and now suddenly I saw him two days in a row? Was I really going to have to stop coming here when I needed groceries? I briefly considered just leaving, but I didn't want caution to go hungry. So as quickly as I could, I went around the aisle and grabbed a bag of Purina. To my relief, Mark was no longer there, and I took my time heading to the checkout, making sure to check if Mark was down any of the aisles so as to not catch me off guard again. Twenty minutes or so went by before I was satisfied, and I saw Mason was back at his post. I breathed a sigh of relief and let him check me out. Missed you a dinner yesterday, he said with a chuckle. I laughed along with him. Sorry, I already had plans with the sofa. 
Nothing wrong with that. I'll just have to take a rain check. Your number doesn't seem to work for the rewards. I was so lost in my own thoughts, I totally forgot I changed my number. It was going to be a pain to call all the places like the bank and stuff and let them know, but at least Mark didn't have it anymore. Yeah, sorry, I got a new one, I said as I typed it into the keypad. Yeah, well, there's a lot of creeps out there. Couldn't help but notice your friend on his way out. Thank you again for yesterday, Mason. That was really sweet of you. Not to worry, I'll always be there for you, he said with a wink. We said our goodbyes and I went to my car. I threw the dog food in the passenger seat and felt my stomach drop when I saw what it landed on. On the seat was a card and with it, a gold locket and chain. The front of the card had a giant red heart with an arrow going through it. On the back was a printed note. Oleta, I know that all of this is sudden, but believe me when I say that I love you. They say love at first sight doesn't exist, but yesterday, the first moment I laid eyes upon you, I knew that it did. We were meant to be together, and I know that in time, you will come to love me just as much as I love you. It's too soon for us to meet just yet, but believe me when I say I'm counting the days. Until then, my love, please accept this gift as a token of my esteem. It was my grandmother's, and I just know she would want you to have it. I'll see you again soon, my darling. Forever yours, M. I gave a revolted shudder and ripped the card up. Not thinking twice about it, I rolled down my window and threw the locket out onto the ground. I gave a quick look around the parking lot, feeling like there were eyes on me from every direction. I went straight home and basically hid the rest of the evening. My mom came home around 6, and she could tell I was shaken. She tried to comfort me, telling me that she talked to Mark about the texts. He denied it and even showed her that I wasn't in his contact list. I thanked her, but really it didn't make me feel a whole lot better. Texts and numbers can be deleted. Plus, if he had a separate phone, that wouldn't prove anything. I didn't say any of this to her, or tell her about what was left in my car. I didn't want her to worry over my problem. In hindsight, I should have said something. Nothing really happened the next couple of days. I didn't go out, and I was starting to feel a bit more normal again. Then one night, I was up in my room doing random things on my laptop when Caution began barking like crazy. I yelled down to her to be quiet a few times, and finally she did. I went back to my computer when my phone vibrated. I looked down at it and was in shock. It was the same exact number that was texting me the other night. Go look on your porch. My mom wasn't home, so I was starting to panic. Slowly, I made my way down where Caution ran up to greet me. I looked out the door's window and didn't see anyone out there. I opened it a crack and, to my relief, there was nothing. As my mind began to reason with it, I felt another text come through. No, back door. I looked over to the sliding glass door and saw something under a rock. I went towards it with caution in tow and was relieved to see nobody standing nearby. I looked down at the note. It had a large heart on it like the one from my car. I ran out to grab it and ran back in as fast as I could. As I was running, I heard the tink of something falling to the wood. It was a ring. Taking another look to make sure it was clear, I picked it up to look at it. It was gold and beautifully decorated with gemstones. Whether it was worth a fortune or not, I threw it into the backyard as far as I could. I went back inside and wiped my hands off on my shirt like I just touched something disgusting. Oleta, did you not like my gift? It's okay, you must be shy. You're so adorable, my darling. Well, I hope you like this gift. This ring was my mother's engagement ring. It is 24 karat gold and is bejeweled with three diamonds with an AGS rating of three. It was given to her by the man of her dreams, just as I give it to you now. Precious Oletta, will you marry me? You don't have to answer me now. I know that you wouldn't want to be with any other guy, and I promise to make you the happiest woman in the world. I know that your mother wouldn't approve. In fact, I took it upon myself to ask her, but her answer was, well, less than satisfactory. No, she didn't take it well, and seemed really upset that I would text you like that. She threatened to turn me over to the police, and anyone that would try to stand in the way of our love doesn't deserve to be a part of our life. She won't bother us anymore, though. 
we can and will be together forever. It's almost our special day. Just one more to go. Be ready. Your loving fiancé, M. I can't begin to tell you all the different thoughts and feelings that ran through me at that moment. Somehow, I fought through it and dialed my mom. It rang until I got to her voicemail. Mom, please tell me you're okay. I can't handle this. Please, just call me back. I hung up and dropped to the ground and just cried until I fell asleep. When I opened my eyes, it was early in the morning. The sun was starting to come up, and I looked around for any sign of my mom. There was nothing, and her car still wasn't in the driveway. I called the police, and they came by, a whole lot of good that did. They looked at the note and the texts, but said that without any more evidence, they couldn't file a kidnapping report, or even a missing persons report since she hadn't been missing for 24 hours. I begged them to stay and help, but they said there was nothing they could do, except come by if anything else happened. I nodded and sat on my couch for a while, hoping my mother would call me back. In my heart, I knew she wouldn't. I worried the rest of the day, and as the sun set once more, I began to panic. It was the night of Valentine's Day, and I knew that he would be here at some point. I didn't have much to protect me aside from caution, so I grabbed a knife from the kitchen and hid up in my room. Nothing happened until much later. I think it was around one o'clock in the morning. I must have dozed off, because I jolted upright, knife in hand, when caution started to bark like crazy. I got up and heard someone moving around downstairs. Not thinking twice, I dialed 911 and told them there was an intruder. They told me to stay in my room and stay on the line. The woman was trying to keep me talking, but I dropped the phone when I heard the doorknob to my room begin to rattle. Caution was going absolutely nuts, and I held my knife at the ready. There was a loud boom of a gunshot as the lock to my door disappeared and the door was pushed open. Go away, Mark! I don't love you! I yelled. But I was absolutely dumbstruck when I saw that it wasn't Mark. It was Mason. My dog lunged at him and was biting at the arm that was holding the gun. He couldn't get a good shot, thank God, and I ran past them and down the stairs. The front door was wide open, and I could see the red and blue lights of police cars from outside. Two officers came in with their guns drawn, and they ushered me past them. I flinched when I heard another two shots from behind me, and it was all sort of a blur after that. Mason had been the one stalking me all this time, and he had killed my mother. If it wasn't for my brave girl, Caution, I couldn't imagine the things that freak would have done to me. Unfortunately, in the struggle, he managed to kill her too. It's been a while now, and even though Mason will be behind bars for many years, I just can't get past it. I get panic attacks whenever any guy shows the slightest bit of interest in me, and I have basically become a recluse. That's pretty much my story. Hopefully, no one else ever has to go through something like that again. What's up everybody? This is the Lone Wolf here. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed my narration of my Valentine's Day tragedy. I would like to give a very special shout out to the very talented Cryptic Wonder for allowing me to read his story. He is an awesome horror writer and there will be a link to his Reddit page in the description below for anybody who wants to check out more of his work. If you are new to the channel, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing if you enjoy the story. Turn on the bell for notifications and join the Lone Wolf Pack. If any of you guys want to send me a message, like a personal scary story or a creepypasta recommendation, or you just want to chat with me, there will be a link to my email account, my Twitter account, and my Discord server in the description. There will also be links in the description for all of the music artists that I used in this video, along with each individual track that I used for those of you interested in the music. And last, but certainly not least, if any of you guys have any ideas or tips for me to make my videos better, please leave me a comment or send me a personal message. Until next time, stay spooky. And remember, the hunt begins when the moon is full. Sweet dreams. <laughs>